I'm Mark Bockrath. I'm a paintings conservator for Barbara A. Buckley and Associates Paintings Conservation in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And our firm has been doing work for the Dell Art Museum, uh, taking care of their paintings conservation needs since about 1988 or 89. These segments of uh, murals are part of a set of eight paintings that Pyle painted in 1909 for, as decoration for his drawing room in his home in Wilmington. Um, they were deinstalled uh, after his death in 1911 and installed in the uh, Wilmington Public Library where they remained until 1923 where they were taken down and um, restored. They were, their, their problems of, um, are, are pretty typical in some ways for conservation treatments. Um, in this case uh, you can see these two mural segments. This one has not been treated since 1923 and this one I finished this year uh, doing cleaning and restoration of its, of its paint film. Um, as you can see on the left there's a lot of soot and discolored yellow varnish and these paintings were made of two pieces of fabric that are seamed along this horizontal line. Often there's a lot of flaking paint along that seam. Uh, down here you see all these lower layers which are uh, paint flakes that have come off and revealed a lower layer of green so the artist had a green underlayer in this sky in this section. The smaller damages that had occurred were extensively overpainted. Uh, some, in some areas, especially the skies on these paintings, there was uh, extensive damage probably from them being pulled off walls twice because they were glued to the wall at the library and had to be peeled off. Um, and of course they probably were also glued to the wall of his home in Wilmington before it was taken to the library. Um, that does a lot of damage to painting typically if you have to um, fight glue to take it off as you're rolling it off. Uh, and then they were mounted to these plywood panels which back in the 20s involved a lot of um, hot animal glue and a lot of heat and pressure which is a, a further um, chance of danger. Um, so what happened is over the years uh, some of the paint flakes started to come loose and uh, some of the restoration which was done and probably matched the original colors fairly well at first started to discolor so it's very obvious on these where there's this darkened yellow which um, at one point probably matched this this cooler lighter yellow and then uh, the skies are as you can see in the finished uh, treatment here are supposed to be turquoise but they were painted over very broadly um, beyond just the, the scope of the damages. They really went pretty far beyond that. With this uh, blue paint, it's blue when it's clean, which uh, is very, very extensive. So in treating these, uh, what's typical is you examine them, write a report, and um, do photo, photo documentation of all sections of the painting. And you do tests to see what is the safest way to remove the grime and discolored varnish. And you also have to, uh, especially for a painting like this, you have to do some study to figure out what parts are original pile and which parts are restoration. So that's the, first, that's the beginning steps of any conservation treatment on, a, on an oil painting. Um, having figured out which parts are original, which parts are uh, restoration, then you try to figure out a way that can safely remove the restoration. And it involves more, more testing. And if there's any losses in the paint film that make a difference in texture then you fill it with a putty and then it's a matter of uh, retouching over the whole surface to try to make um, any areas that uh, are damaged match the original paint. In the vast majority of cases of restoration you can tell exactly what should be there and you're not making anything up and we restrict our in painting, we call it in painting because it's staying within the borders of the loss. We try to restrict the in painting to the damage itself and not go beyond that. We use reversible materials, we use varnishes that don't yellow, and if there were any problem with the materials we use, they're easy, easily uh, to figure out what that sky, in, in this case the sky needed some restoration. Um, sometimes you have to go a little further and, and uh, not make up things, but try to interpret it a little bit if there's a, a lot of damage. Uh, there are two large works um, that were treated at, by the conservation program at Winterton Museum. And then there's a six um, smaller segments that are about five feet tall and anywhere from a foot to four feet wide uh, that comprise the rest of the group. And those six are the ones that I've been treating for the installation. Well, I think the biggest excitement is to find out 
how nicely they were painted underneath all that grime and varnish and restoration. Um, I mean, I knew he was a good painter. He's one of my favorite painters from the collection, but you don't often see him touted for a landscape section, but he was really experimenting with these paintings. And in addition to having classical figures on many of the paintings, um, it's this wonderful landscape uh, experiment, I think, w w that he's doing, having some panels that are nothing but landscape, and they're so well painted. And even though conservators can sort of look through soot and varnish and get some sense that that's going to be a pink flower, that's going to be a yellowish lower part of the sky and, and turquoise in the top. It's still pretty shocking when you actually get down to the paint when you're cleaning it and you see how brilliant those flowers were and, and, and what a good colorist he was. I think these paintings in some way are more colorful than many of his illustrations and they have this beautiful impressionist brushwork all the way through which I think allies him to other American impressionist painters and that, that was sort of a discovery I didn't quite expect to see that, um, that color harmony and just the brilliance of the color.